What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back with 40 Facts on the Warhammer 40k Universe. Today I'm talking about everybody's least favorite, <laughs> or so it seems, least favorite Space Marine chapter, the Iron Hands. Out of all the chapters of Space Marines, the Iron Hands is probably one that I see the least, even though they are freaking crazy awesome. So basically these guys are all about augmenting themselves with cybernetics. Basically flesh is weak and they are here to become Skitari essentially. Now if you look at all the, um, what do you call them, battle reports on Facebook, you hardly see Iron Hands anywhere. Um, I remember when we used to go to our uh, local GW back when it was still at the mall, um, <laughs> the, the dude, he tried to get people to you know, get iron hands and whatnot, and everybody just laughed at him like, hey, nobody plays that army. But anyway, guys, today I'm gonna talk about the iron hands because with steel, we are stronger, but without a soul, we are nothing. These are words to live by, guys. So let's jump into this lore. Medusa is the iron hands homeworld, and it is a realm of perpetual gloom. Its polluted sky churns over a rugged land of volcanoes, so tall that they illuminate the black clouds from within and above. The people of Medusa are in constant battle with both the deadly elements and each other for access to the planet's limited resources. At no point have the Iron Hands sought to end the conflicts between the clans of their world, as they know full well that such competition weeds out the weak and only those unworthy to survive. Only the strong endure, and no compassion is spared for those who cannot survive, by their own merits. It is exclusively from these unforgiving and indomitable people that the Iron Hands recruit, and the chapter's companies bear the ancient names and symbols of the Medusian clans instead of numerical denominations, for the world, the people, and the chapter are inseparable. They are all harsh survivors from a harsh world. The organizational structure of the Iron Hands is also changed upon to the return of Medusa. Without Ferris Manus, it was decided that no single warrior should ever permanently lead the Iron Hands. Instead, the captains and the most revered warriors of the Legion formed the Iron Council. Those who sit on this council became known as the Iron Fathers, and that body has guided the Iron Hands ever since. When the fires of the Horus Heresy had ebbed and Robute Gilliman revealed his great work, the Codex Astartes, the Iron Council saw that adapting its wisdom was the only logical course. While some fought against the breaking of the legions, the Iron Hands refused to show weakness and despite their reduced numbers, still managed to found two successor chapters. In the centuries following the second founding, the Iron Hands cut a deadly swath through any and all who opposed them methodically destroying enemy armies and alien empires. As the centuries turned into millennia, the chapter grew ever more reclusive and hostile to outside interference. The one exception to this was the Adeptus Mechanicus. The open reverence the Iron Hands developed for machines fostered close ties with the Adeptus Mechanicus, a relationship viewed unfavorably by other chapters. The Iron Hands have ever sent greater numbers of Battle Brothers to Mars, where they are schooled in the mysteries of the machine cult to a far superior degree than tech marines of other chapters. Upon their return to Medusa, the Iron Hands treat their tech marines with a respect that borders on the spiritual. As the centuries have passed, a great many tech marines have been inducted into the ranks of the Iron Fathers, and they wield great influence on both the council and the battlefield. Central to the identity of the Iron Hands is the belief that flesh even that of a genetically enhanced space marine is inherently weak. While injured space marines commonly replace battle damaged limbs with bionics, the iron hands exercise perfectly healthy body parts in favor of unyielding metal. Throughout the iron hands lifetime, he tends to grow ever more resentful of his own flesh, gradually replacing his original limbs with a bludgeoning array of augmentations. The ultimate honor for an Iron Hand Space Marine is to become mind fused with the body of a Dreadnought, to leave behind their mortal bodies and wage war for all eternity as a living machine. The Iron Hand's detached ruthlessness and devastation of weakness is inherited from the beliefs of their Primarch, Ferris Manus, and they owe much to his upbringing on the world of Medusa. 
However, the embittered nature of the Iron Hands and their obsession with purging flesh stem not from the teachings of Ferris, but from his tragic death. The Iron Hands refused to accept their Primarch's death, choosing instead to believe that he had escaped Isvan V and would one day return. Such delusional solace did little to aid them in the wake of the massacre. However, with their Primarch lost and their legion crippled, they returned to Medusa full of bitterness. None were immune to their ire, not aliens, not traitors, and on a few occasions, not even their allies. The Iron Hands harbored a special resentment for the Salamanders and Ravenguard, believing that they had followed Ferris Manus instead of retreating, then the traitors would have definitely been defeated. The Iron Hands also developed a self-loathing, blaming both their own veterans and even the Primarch for the defeat on Isvan. They saw that Ferris's disastrous tactical decisions in the battle had been based on emotion instead of logic. The Iron Hands set about purging those weakness from themselves, smothering their anger with cold reason and accelerating the process of augmentating their flesh with cybernetics. And now let us talk about the purging of Kantquil. The High Governor of Kantquil succumbs to the false promises of the Dark God Sunesh and within a month the entire subsector writhes with the corrupting essence of chaos. The task of cleansing Quantco falls to the Iron Hands, who begin a systematic assault on the subsector's dozen planets, the instant their battle barges enter rage. Chaos cultists are slain in the thousands, the Iron Hands marching through all resistance seemingly unmoved by their own injuries and casualties. The fiercest fighting occurs on the hive world of Shardness, when hordes of demons rip through into the mortal realm to attack the space marines. Though the Iron Hand sustained severe casualties, they refused to yield, meeting each fresh assault with redoubled determination and controlled bursts of bolter fire. In a desperate final battle, Chaplain Garum vanquishes a greater demon of Slanesh in personal combat, despite the loss of his own arm. Garum's heroics buy enough time for the warp rift to be closed by the chapter's librarians. With the demons banished, the Iron Hands show no mercy for those who would let such corruption overtake their world. In a year of bloodshed, the entire populations are declared traitors and executed, slaughtered while their pleas for mercy go unheard. And that's where I'm going to end this lore on the Iron Hands. So what I think about this army, it is awesome. I really like the whole fact that they kind of become robotic themselves. And this is all because of the death of Ferris Manus. Now, if you guys don't know, spoiler alert, but this, <laughs> this was like spoiled so long ago. This came out years ago. Ferris Manus was decapitated by his best friend, Fulgrim. Uh, they were buddy buddies, and then Fulgrim succumbed to chaos. He was possessed by a demon, and he decapitates Ferris Manus. Now, Ferris Manus, he was all about, um, contrary to the belief of the Iron Hands, he was more about emotion, humanity, and the Iron Hands are basically saying, no, it's flesh is weak, we've got to become emotionless, we've got to be killing machines. And that's not what Ferris was about. It's like, they're going against their own Primarch's belief because they can't accept the fact that he's dead. So because of this, they've kind of shut themselves off. And all this, I guess, interred emotions actually got released into the warp and it kind of became a, a demon, so to speak. Actually, it's true. It did become a demon. Um, I know we covered this uh, back in the lore. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it involves the Iron Hands. We do have an Iron Hands playlist, so I'll put that at the end of the video so you guys can check it out. But yeah, all their pent-up uh, emotions was basically pushed so deep that it became a demon. Now, this has a lot of parallels because they were being demonic themselves. They killed entire populations because of their belief that flesh is weak they were corrupted by chaos so they don't deserve to be living anymore that's that's rough man that's that's some like that's i mean th these guys are supposed to be protecting humanity uniting the imperium and they're they're doing the opposite they're they're not really well salamanders and space wolves are really the only ones that care about the actual human civilians like their lives but they should be 
preparing at least the Imperium for the reawakening of the Emperor. At least that's their beliefs. So that being said, there's a bunch of uh, duality, uh, good and evil. Are they right for doing what they did? Uh, should they completely cut off all emotion and become robots? Um, that's up to you to decide. So that kind of that kind of progresses the whole storyline of the Iron Hands. Like, do you want them to be warriors of justice, or do you want them to be warriors of pure killing intent? So that being said, if you guys do run a Iron Hands army, the very few of you that do, how do you guys like to run it? Is it mostly Space Marines? Uh, do you guys heavily convert it? Or do you play a bunch of tanks, dreadnoughts, that kind of thing, flyers? Because if I were to play these guys, it'd be dreadnoughts up to booty. I'd be having all types of dreadnoughts in there. Um, I'd kind of make my own mini, uh, what is it called, Iron Circle and have my like bunch of uh, HQs in there and whatnot so that'd be pretty badass um, also they're very easy to paint pretty much just black and silver uh, black armor and silver for their cybernetics so there you go guys let me know how you guys play these iron warriors let me know how they actually do on the battlefield since they're um, I believe their chapter tactic gives them a six plus feel no pain essentially so they're more durable than most uh, space marines but yeah, guys, that's all the time I have. Hopefully we can keep the discussion going down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you then.